Okay, what we have here is a club car carry-all, carry-all 252. Uh, most carry-alls and the DS share the same front end suspension components. Of course, you know, the, this has a little more heavy-duty spring on it. And um, what we've got here is another fine rubber bushing failure. And we can't really... We're just not going to keep putting in the rubbers anymore. We have these real nice Delrin bushings made by DuPont and they seem to be doing a spectacular job for us. Uh, this is kind of unique. He's got a spindle drop on this thing. It looks like a Jake's. And the frame, the frame is also good. Okay. I guess we do what we got to do. How high do you want to go? Um, so what we're going to do is we, we went ahead and just took the whole nose right off this thing. It's only, as you may well know, just a few bolts and, you know, undo the lights, a couple bolts, loosen up the bonnet screws, boom, front ends off, much easier to get at. Uh, it's going to be a much easier job. So we're going to get, um, all this tore down and we're going to get these new bushings put in. We'll try and go through this step by step for you so you can Follow along, see what how it goes. Okay, we're back. So we got the wheels off, we got the shocks off, and we have loosened the majority of the hardware. Now, right here on the upper clevis, we took that loose. I doesn't matter which way it goes in, but we want to drill the front hole half inch. The back hole is going to remain three eighths. Same down at the bottom. You're gonna push that in, drive it in, beat it in, whatever you gotta do. We won't have this problem anymore because we're putting stainless shoulder bolts in, so they'll they should easily slide in and out. And up here um, on your plate, um, apparently uh, on a carry-all, it's got this big heavy plate. Don't know why, but they did it. Um, we're not we're gonna retain the three eighths holes that are here on each side. And on the thin plate, retain the 3 8 holes. Do not drill these out. That needs to remain 3 8 On the back side, uh, we're going to drill a half inch hole in the thicker plate. And in the front, right here, we're going to drill a half inch hole where the 3 8 hole is. And that's going to allow us to have a better hold on this frame here to our upper control arm. And we're not going to be relying on this real thin plate here, the one we just removed from over there, uh, to hold that bolt secure. Okay, let's get a little bit more done. We'll be right back. Okay, so we got all the hardware out and here's what's left of the inner bushings. Absolutely nothing. It's all gone. Uh, the, the metal inner core was in there, but that's garbage. Uh, your nuts, bolts that come off of this is all garbage. Just throw it in the garbage. And you can see this was well on its way out. Um, very dangerous to drive this car. It's a pretty fast car, and it's kind of double lifted. And, um, and it does have front wheel brakes. Well, the left front brake grabs pretty good. And uh, it took me for by surprise, that's for sure. Um, but... What we're going to do is we're going to press in the new bushings and then we're going to pilot drill for our uh, quarter 28 threads. We're going to tap into it so we can grease them later and make them last longer. And you want to kind of get them in a position where, you know, it's kind of easy to get at with a grease gun later. Um, you know, we're going to get one here and here and whoop, whoop, where are we at right up on top uh, make it easy for yourself later on now the one on the other side because your steering box hangs down over top of the hole we're going to put this one on the passenger side so you can reach through and put your grease gun nozzle on and pump grease into it it's not really required to grease these but we're in here we're in this deep we're gonna put in six grease fittings and call it good um, we all know most customers will not 
maintain or grease or anything to their buggy. I mean, you can see right here, um, it definitely had some grease on it at one point in time, but doesn't look like anything real recent. And it looks pretty, pretty dirty. So, and of course, you know, dirt, dirt's attracted to grease, but um, we're gonna be putting bellows on this steering rack while we're in here. It's gonna be much easier to do with the body out of the way. The whole job will be anyway. All right, we'll be back in a, in a flash. And we're back. Okay, so what I've got done here is I got the old junky bushings out. OEM or aftermarket, they're all junk. And we have the new bushings pressed in. Now they press in pretty easy. They're, you don't need a hydraulic ram. Um, you can do them in the vise. You can do them with a rubber mallet, tap them in. So it's pretty easy. This is going to be the passenger side. So the Zerks will be facing the passenger side of the car. And we run a reamer down through it to kind of line board out, make it nice and neat. And then on our other one, yeah, I know it's upside down, they will be facing inward. So you'll just have to reach through to get to them. We decided to just go ahead and do both of them uh, in the same direction. And there is our other one over the driver's side kingpin. Finally, we've got some parts that are actually better than OEM aftermarket parts, if you can believe it. Okay, um, we have the outer hole drill, top and bottom, because we're doing leaf spring bushings too out at Del Ren as well. Um, but we're not going to drill through that leaf spring there, that spring steel, and put threads in it. I know it can be done, but these really don't require it. And it would have to be really toward the bottom side where they're going to tear it off anyway. So we're opting not to do that. And, you know, if it becomes a problem down the road, we'll readdress it. Okay, let me drill a few more holes over here in the fun piece, and I'll be back. Okay, and we're back. Oh, sorry. Nobody needs to see that. Okay, so what I did here was I took these four nuts off and just lifted this frame up to make it easier to drill these holes out. I have done it with an angled drill. I have done it with a regular drill from the back. It is not easy. You're banging your knuckles. You're tearing yourself up. And all the metal pieces are falling on you, which is no fun. Okay, so uh, we got our half inch holes there. I'm gonna reamer through them too, to make sure they were nice and nice and straight. Okay. So, no, just like they say in the movies, well, on uh, what you call it there, it is hard to do this with one hand. I don't have a cameraman yet. We're not that, uh, we're not that bougie around here. I do have help. I just, well, poor Mike, he's sick right now. So, uh, come on, get in there. Get in, get in there. Okay, so now you can see where we're going with this. Um, really nice stainless uh, Allen head shoulder bolts, um, half inch diameter here. Oh my goodness, we got dirt in a shop. Imagine that. Uh, and three eighths, uh, sixteen threads on this end, and they're gonna go in from the back side. Get in there. Yeah, sometimes it's not the easiest to do, especially one-handed. Okay, so there's that end, and this end is going to go back in the clevis where it used to be. This is pretty straightforward nuts and bolts. There's nothing difficult about this. It does certainly take more time to do um than the conventional cheapo junky rubbers that they put in there and um yeah yeah thank goodness that they don't make condoms because they break all the time they their 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 rubbers break all the time we'd we'd have all kind of little little children running around we don't need and then 
your uh, little bus bar plate, whatever you want to call it, stabilizer plate, goes back in there. And then we provide you with a 3 16 nylon jam nut. Now, I learned the hard way, so you don't have to. And do not use power tools tightening down that nut. It's a nylon jam nut. You don't need to have it super uber tight. Bring it down snug, give it a little ump, and she will stay right there. So now you can see we're going to be able to grease this and service it down the road uh, in here and out there. And this is not going to move around. It's not even tight and I can barely, barely feel anything. We'll, we'll get that all snugged down and check it again. Guaranteed not to move. It'll move this way, but it will not move this way which is what, what we're after. That, that changes your toe in, your camber, changes everything. Screws it all up. So we'll be back in just a few. Okay, here we are. That should be the end of my video here. Um, we've got the uh, everything all bolted in. Nice and neat. And now it's freezable. And we're not even gonna put this part on the video. That's you got it there, you'll get it here. It's pretty straightforward. Drill one side out, put your new bushings in the spring, and put your new bolt in and your new nut on, tighten it down. And then comes time for the alignment. You know, proper name of that right there, they call that the delta plate. I don't know why. Maybe it's from New Orleans. Who knows? Um, <laughs> toe in. Important. Eighth inch gap at the rear. We use a um, basically a throttle rod um, to determine our spacing uh, from the front of the rim to the back of the rim. And we're going off the rim, not the tire. These, again, cheapo tires are not perfect, so go off the rim. The rims are pretty true. And the bigger the rim, the better you're going to be able to dial it in. Um, you know, eight inch. Yeah, eight inch versus 12 or 14. Much easier to get the tool in there and much easier to get that aligned just right. Um, once the center, or beep, 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 toe in set, then you can go and set your center steering. Now, a lot of folks don't know this and um, I've seen it time and time again. You break loose both nuts this is a left and a right hand thread in here. Actually, uh, this is a, and here's a left hand thread and that's a right hand thread. And what happens when you turn this little bitty little tie rod right here, um, it moves that steering wheel at a uh, much faster rate. And you're not gonna have just a little bit of threads in here, um, you know, if you had to run it out too far. Uh, you want to try and keep as much thread count as you can inside this uh, little tie rod right here for safety's sake because um, the less threads you have in there the better chances are it's going to pull out on you and you won't have any steering. So uh, before we put this thing back together we're going to go ahead and change out his boots for him. Throw him a new set of shocks on there. They haven't been changed since God only knows when. Probably never. And um, I hope this helps. Yeah, they're available uh, from Beige Golf Cars only. We designed it, we manufacture it right here in beautiful Edgewater, Florida. And if you need uh, more information, you can give us a call, 386-423-0975. Thanks for watching.